With Romans 1.18, we transition into a new section, and let's just jump in. Romans 1.18. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. What verse 18 says is that God has revealed His wrath. As a result of that, lost men know that there is a hell. Why? Because God has revealed His wrath. It's not a secret. He's made that known. I'll suggest to you, that is why even the most spiritually ignorant person has the phrase, go to hell in their vocabulary. Because all of mankind is aware that there is a hell. It's not a secret. Wrath is widely understood because God has revealed it. Now notice what the last part of the verse says. Who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Isn't that fascinating? Is the truth far away from the lost, or is it within their grasp? If you hold the truth, you can't claim, you can't pretend it's very far away, can you? But the lost hold the truth in what? Unrighteousness. So in other words, the truth, as a lost man, the, the truth is available to me. I hold it. I, 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 I am, it's, it's within my grasp. But I hold it in the midst of me being unrighteousness, unrighteous. Now, is that going to create tension in my life? If I hold the truth, but I hold it in unrighteousness? Look with me at verse 19. Because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God hath showed it unto them. So that verse says that that which may be known of God is manifest. In other words, it's, it's obvious, it's clear, it's evident. And then it says, for God hath showed it unto them. So not only was it obvious, God points it out, right? He shows them exactly what he wants them to know. Now, I want you to notice something here. Do you see where it says, that which may be known of God is manifest? And then what does it say immediately after that? In them. So not only is it obvious, but it's within them. They have internal knowledge. Notice with me verse 20. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen. Now notice what it says. Being understood by the things that are made. You see how that verse is saying that man has knowledge? That man understands what God has done? Look at verse 21. Because that when they knew God. Well, how are you going to get around that one? That one says that man knew. What these verses are showing us is this. Not only did God give creation as a witness to his existence, but he gave internal knowledge in man. Here's what I mean by this. If you just go outside and you look up at the vastness of the universe, should you be able to figure out God exists? Yeah, you should, right? It didn't get there by chance. There was suddenly, there was nothing, and then there was an explosion, and then there was everything. Is not real. If, there was a, if there's a massive explosion that creates everything, something had to cause the explosion. Listen, if you're just walking down the street, and there's a massive explosion, and someone says, what caused that? And your answer is, oh, nothing, it just happened. They would not take you seriously because things just don't explode. There's a reason for it, right? When you look out at the universe, 
at the vastness of it, the obvious intelligent design of the universe, it's obvious that some intelligence created it. Okay? That's often called natural revelation. But what these verses are saying is you have more than natural revelation. You also have internal revelation where you know the things of God. What could be more obvious when it says, because when they knew God, man knew. He possessed that knowledge, being understood by the things that are made. I'm going to suggest this. What man likes to pretend is that the truth is distant, impossible to find, unclear, and unknowable, because if it is, then it's not his fault for not knowing it. If it's so hard to find, then I'm not accountable for not knowing it. You may, some of you may have seen this. There was a famous uh, debate with a famous atheist, Richard Dawkins, and he was asked the question, if you get to the next life and, and God asks you, why didn't you believe in me, what are you going to say? And his response was, well, I will just say, why did you make yourself so hard to find? In other words, not my fault. It's because it was so hard to figure out. And so I'm just here doing my best, innocently seeking the truth, and God, you just did a lame job of proving your existence. So that's the hard attitude of man. In other words, I'm not accountable. It's not my fault. But what these verses are saying is you have internal knowledge that you possess. And if you do, then you cannot pretend that it is too hard to find when it's manifest, being understood by the things that are made. And then what it says here, because, verse 19, because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God hath showed it unto them. In other words, no one is going to be able to play the I just didn't know card. The Bible is the most published book on earth. If you knew nothing, if you had no revelation whatsoever, which isn't true because you have it, but if you knew nothing, the most logical thing you would do to try to figure out truth is you would start with the bestseller, right? This would be the most logical thing to do. And the fact that the Bible is the most published book and yet hardly read is an indication, it's a, it's a testimony to the fact that men just reject the truth. They're not interested in it. 